The first thing any hunter should do once they get situated is work on getting the additional automatic farms unlocked. In Monster Hunter Rise, these are submarines that your buddies manage. You could use them to easily farm resources, accruing after every hunt. As with any good sales tactic, the first submarine from Rondine here is free. But let's be real, you need the second and third submarines unlocked to really reap the benefits of these item generating submarines. I'm not here to waste your time, so check the timeline to skip to the third submarine requirements, or just keep watching for the second submarine, which will be right now. Unlocking the second submarine. To unlock the second submarine, you'll need to do a request called Cultural Exchange, given by Rondine in the Buddy area. There is a lot of conflicting information regarding just when this request unlocks. In my playthrough, the request unlocked right after killing Aknosom in the Village 2 Urgent called Feathered Frenzy. After you fight the Aknosom, Rondine in the Buddy area will offer the request. You'll need to gather three Wisp Lanterns and three Boat Shells. Let's start with the Wisp Lanterns. Wisp Lanterns are easy to find. They're located in Shrine Ruins at the Shimmering Red Berry locations. You can find out exactly where they are from your map. Open up the Icon Legend with your map and scroll through the filters until you see special items. Scroll down to Shimmering Red Berry and you'll see all of them marked on your map. Now head to each of these locations and gather until you find your three Wisp Lanterns. You may gather at some spots and not find the item, but that's completely okay. There's plenty of these gathering spots to visit. There's one right by the main base. Head down the hill right by the base like you're going to area one, but hang a left and follow the pathway that overlooks the area. There's another gather spot in area one at the easternmost point. Just follow your map to this one. There's also one all the way up in area 11 by the wyvern nest. They're really all over the place and they're not hard to find, so I won't go into detail on how to find them in this map. Now for the boat shells. These are located in Frost Islands and a unique gather point is called an oyster bed. Again, these are easily located via your map filter, so take a look and locate them that way. It took me a few minutes to get all the boat shells, so just stick with it. There are two gather points in the ship graveyard area here and several very close to and in area 10. It's pretty easy to do a little loop around the map from here and they do respawn every few minutes just in case the desire sensor is set against you. Once you have the wisp lanterns and boat shells, you're good to complete the request and unlock the second submarine. Make sure you have an idle buddy to man the submarine or just hire a new one. Farewell. Unlocking the third submarine. The third submarine requires a bit more effort. First, you'll need to do the urgent village mission to kill Almadron. This is the urgent quest that gets you into six star village missions. Once you're done with Almadron, it's time to gather three different items as part of a request called economic stimulation. One King Rhino from the flooded forest, three rock roses from the sandy plains, and three bismuth prisms from the lava caverns. We can do some prep work to make our gathering easier. First, try to get two ranks in the geologist skill. This will let you gather more items from these points, which increases your chance of finding what you're looking for. You could easily get this skill through gems, or you could do what I did and buy two pieces of the leather armor set. The next thing to pay attention to is the upsurges within areas. If you go to your expeditions and use the bumper to look at the details, you can see what gathering points are being surged. We're looking for an upsurge of local items. That'll make it easier to find what we're looking for. Luckily, I had an upsurge for the flooded forest here, so that's where I started. The upsurges do change after every hunt. If you really want to get the upsurge, just pick an easy quest, finish it, and hope that the upsurge will be in effect when you get back. Honestly, though, that would probably just waste more time. The drop rates on these items are not so astronomically low that we have to get crazy. King Rhino. To find the King Rhino Beetle, grab a barrel bomb and head to the Flooded Forest. Switch your map to filter for the gathering spot called Shining Rhinos. From there, head to any of these points and hope that you're lucky enough to find your King Rhino. Most of these are not too difficult to find. There's one up here by Area 13 in a small temple. There's one above the second subcamp. Use your wire bugs to get up and above. There's another in the most northern part of Area 7. Now you might be wondering, what was that barrel bomb for? Well, if you head to the very top of the big pyramid by area two, make sure you climb all the way to the top. There's a partially collapsed doorway. Use your barrel bomb to blow open the door and there's another rhino in there waiting for you alongside a relic record. Hopefully you'll find the item that you need. Otherwise you could start looping around again or just redeploy. Rock roses. Next up is rock roses from the Sandy Plains. These are a little harder to find, so I'm going to show you how to get to some of these locations. First, switch your map filtering to the Desert Rose, as those are the items that drop the Rock Roses. 
You can find the first desert rose by climbing northwest from the base camp, climbing over the various ledges and cliffs until you get to this point here. Now if you head north through area 7 and climb to the peak of this mountain immediately to the south of area 10, there's another desert rose for you to grab. If you head to the land bridge between areas 9 and 10 and look north, you'll see a little ruined wall. There's another desert rose on the back side of this wall. The last two rock roses are easily accessible from subcamp 2 or the subcamp between areas 5, 8, and 9. From subcamp 2, head to the east and drop down this long passageway into the underground cave and you'll be in a room with a lone tree on a sandy ledge. Take a closer look below this cliff and you'll find a rose. Then for the last rose, head east out of the cavern and climb the very long wall of vines all the way to the top. At the top of this vine, on the left, there's yet another rose. Hopefully you found them all. Bismuth prisms. The last ingredient we need for the third Argozi submarine is three bismuth prisms from the lava caverns. These drop from an item called iridescent ores and they look like a bunch of blue, yellow, and green cubes. Switch your map filter to the iridescent ores and pray to the desire sensor that you'll get them quickly. To start, head up to subcamp two, or if you don't have that subcamp, head to the northwest area of the map and just don't go underground. There's two iridescent ores nearby. One is very close to the broken bridge that crosses this canyon by the uh, first subcamp. For the second ore, there's a crescent moon sort of shape right where the six is on the map. At the top end of this shape is one of the ores that you're looking for. Now from this ore, jump down off the crescent moon shape into area six and then head to this part here. There's several pillars around here. Climb up this one to the northwest and on top you'll find another ore waiting for you. There's also an iridescent ore in area 13, the large lava room. Drop off the lip on the eastern side and it's tucked away to the north. Lastly, there's an ore at the northern part of area 10. This one is above ground. Take the tunnel out of area 14 to the surface and then turn around and jump on top of the tunnel entrance. Continue to the north a little bit and you'll eventually find the iridescent ore. If you got this far, Great job. The last step is to turn in the items. So go ahead and talk to Rondine at the Buddy Plaza and turn in your materials. You'll immediately get access to the third submarine after a cute cutscene, of course. You can now send out your buddies to farm and collect up to three different types of ingredients. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and let me know in the comments if this helped you. I have other video guides on Monster Hunter available on my channel and website, GameTaco.Live. Take care, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.